Well, hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we're going to talk about how long do you have to wait before you can take a board from this to this. And by this, I mean a wood shop, not a abyss of random tools and such. <laughs> so let's, let's dive right into that topic. So boards that come straight off the mill are considered green. And that term is used even if the log has been on the ground for a long time, like this red oak log uh, has been here almost uh, probably eight months. If I would mill this up, those boards would still be considered green because they'd contain a lot of moisture in them. And that moisture has to come out, of course, to be used in finished woodworking projects. Now, the amount of drying that needs to take place before a board can be considered useful obviously varies on the project. This is white oak that we're going to use on our trailer project. So it's going to be the deck of a utility trailer. So I've got it stacked up so that it can air dry nicely. But uh, it doesn't have to be as dry as woodworking would. Um, it's going to be outside all the time. I'm going to oil finish it. There's all kinds of things I'm going to do uh, to try to preserve it. But of course, it's going to be outside in the elements. Right here is poplar that I've milled recently that will be used up in our farrowing barn. So I could actually put it up green. Now, with green, there is some issues of movement and shrinkage and those type of things. But I could use it green. I've got it ricked up here. So by the time I'm ready to start setting boards, it's going to be plenty dry to do what I need to do. So what are the options for drying? Well, as you can see here, um, these are just stacked up outside and they have ricks or stickers or whatever you want to call the boards that, that go sideways that lift the boards off one another. It allows the boards to try to dry out more evenly. Now, I'm not going to get into all the nuances in the biology of how logs and how wood dries, but just imagine that uh, Wood is made up of a series of straws, and they all run long ways. So the water wants to escape the ends faster than it does the middle. And that's why you have checking. You know, if I really wanted to get technical, I would have sealed and coated the ends of these boards to help that moisture not escape quickly out of the ends of the straws, but evaporate, uh, obviously, through the sides of the cell walls. Anyway, here on Red Tool House, we don't have a kiln. You know, if you were going to go to a fancy woodworking store and buy some white oak, for a furniture project you're going to work on, then you would be buying something that's kiln dried. So it's gone into a machine that heat's been added or low humidity's been added with a combination of heat, depending on the type of kiln that it is. And it reduces the moisture in that wood, usually down to 10, uh, down below 10%. Some like to see as low as five or 6%, depending on the project they're working on. In my experience here in West Virginia, these boards would never see less than 20% if I just left them outside the entire time. Our humidity level is high enough in West Virginia all year long. These just aren't going to get much drier than that. The longer I leave them out, it would, it would start to decline maybe below, but then of course rot and all those issues would be, would be uh, set in, especially with poplar. Carpenter ants would probably have this a pile of sawdust in a year and a half. So really the only option I have here at Red Tool House is to take wood, rick it up, but rick it up in a cover, rick it up that it's, it gets out of the elements. And that's what we've done here in the barn loft. Uh, last December, it's now October 2019 as I'm shooting this video, so December of 2018, Kelly and I milled a small stack of poplar and we actually put it up in the barn loft for that very reason. So uh, we're going to test that now. We're going to pull it down and just see what our moisture content is and see if it's good enough to use for some interior projects. So here's this poplar wood ricked up. Got some vinyl siding that's on top of it. Just kind of tucked away here in the dry of the loft. So you can see how uh, it's even changed its color. Some of the UV that has gotten in here has affected it, but it's, it's really dry. You know, I can pick it up and feel it, that it's much, much lighter than it was when I put it in here. So let's get some of it down. Oh, the devil, he wears hip 
black shoes. Oh, the devil, he wears the hypocrite shoes. Oh, the devil wears the hypocrite shoes. Don't watch how they slip on you. No hiding place down here. There's no hiding place down here. All right, so I brought one of my poplar boards in here. And so the question is, how do I determine the moisture content in this board here on the farm? Well, there's all kinds of different ways you can do it. Um, there's, if you're in a kiln, you guys can take cutoffs and they'll weigh them and, and figure out the, the difference in weight and do a calculation. There's all kinds of brainy stuff there that I don't do. Um, many years ago, over, probably had this about 15 years, I got this Wagner moisture meter. And it's a radio frequency moisture meter, so it's made for woodworking. <clears throat> it only goes up to like 30% moisture content. So anything I do outside, it wouldn't make sense to stick it on something green or even something that's been out for a while because it's just going to max out. Now they make other moisture meters, uh, pen type that you drive in that are geared more toward the milling side and not the woodworking side. And those can go up to like 60, 70%, I believe. That's something I wouldn't necessarily be using in a wood shop because obviously I don't want to drive pens uh, into my wood all the time, uh, damaging that wood if I was going to do a nice woodworking project. So the way this Wagner works is obviously you just turn it on and once it's ready, it's, it's going to read a zero. But it, it needs a specific gravity of the species that you're doing. And I've even cheated. I've... Uh, uh, the, my four most popular wood species that I use here in the workshop, I went ahead and wrote those numbers down. So you're looking at 67 uh, for white oak all the way down to 55 for walnut. Well, we're doing poplar. Uh, so poplar actually, I believe, is 42, if I remember correctly. So i got to hold my button down here, and i got to go around the horn till we get to 42. Missed it. It's like Toy Story. It's faster to go back around. There. So once we have that set, then we lock it in. Okay, so once we've got it set, all we do is just come over, and ideally you want a, uh, you want a clean spot on the board. Get all the sawdust off there. You want to lay the device down flat. And you get a reading, and that's showing a reading of 12. So that means there's 12% moisture in this. If I move it over here, 10 on the end. So the closer you get to the ends, the lower it should be. Yeah, shows you how right that is. So somewhere between 10 and 12% we're seeing. And you don't really see how messy your wood shop is to see it on camera. Uh, so, so what's my takeaway from this? What am I going to do with a 10 to 12 percent? Well, if I was doing fine furniture building, if I was building somebody a table or a, or a trunk or you know a, a piece of furniture like that, I wouldn't use this. It's just not quite there yet. I'd want to get a reading of uh, 10 percent or less. Actually, nine is what I like to do. Nine to seven is what I try to shoot for. When I buy kiln dried wood, then that's what I'm looking for. Um, but with what we're doing with this, we're, we're actually just doing some casement, doing some trim in the main house. So um, it's fine. Uh, you know, 10 to 12% will be all right. There's a chance you can have just a little bit of shrinkage, but not enough to, to be that big a deal. It's not going to be structural. It's not like I'm going to be having a lot of tight joints uh, that, could come, uh, that could come loose and develop gaps. But one thing I'm going to do too, just to make sure, because you know, I'm reading from the outside, that moisture meter, since it doesn't have pins to drive through and it's just kind of bouncing a radio signal there, then I actually want to run this through the planer a couple times, get a smooth face on it, and then reshoot it to see what uh, moisture meeting we're getting. Okay, so now I've got one side of the board nice and smooth, super sexy, very, super, very smooth. Uh, it's now time to take a reading. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Wait, different kind of reading. Take a reading here and see what we have. Yes, it's been a long day. Twelve, thirteen, twelve, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. So you can see my 10 is gone. I don't, I don't have a 10 anymore on that reading. So that's to me, is a little more accurate. I've taken that first layer off so the uh, meter can penetrate a little deeper into the board. If you'd be so interested in a Wagner, um, I assume they still make it. I'll post a link below if they do. <laughs> if they don't, there won't be a link. Uh, I'm sure there's something out there very similar. One rule of thumb always gone by, and, and I think it's, again, depending on where you are, your climate may vary, but the rule of thumb we always look at here in West Virginia is uh, if you can get something ricked up and put in a dry shed, dry cover, barn, something like that, something that's got some air movement but is dry, then you're looking at about one year per inch thickness of the board. So this is a one inch thick board, so within a year it should be below 10%. And again, we put this in the barn at, in December, so here it is the 1st of October. So if I went two more months, I'd probably be pretty close to that. That would be fairly accurate. If it's thicker, you know, two inches, three inches, you're going to just have to add year after year after year, or of course, try to get it in a kiln. And there are a lot of options. Again, that's a whole different video series and probably even a different channel talking about uh, the different kiln options, de uh, dehumidification, steam kilns, solar kilns, all those type of things. Uh, we won't get into that. So for those of you that are wondering, from the time off the mill to when I can bring it into the workshop, how long do I have to wait? I hope that answers your question. All right, take care, everybody. We're going to make some sawdust. So if you're wondering where this sawdust goes, stick around. I'll show you that here at the end.